Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me, Bill. Now, I've opened a requests to uh, do a little bit more with signal generators, and I've been thinking about um, some of the things that I use signal generators for. So I thought, well, just put a bit of a compilation of some of those together for a start and see how we got on. So here we're going to look at um, using very low frequencies and then we're also going to use the signal generator as a source of AC voltage. So let's crack on and go to the bench. Okay so the first thing I want to try and uh, look at as a bit of a, a different use for a signal generator is to, is to take things very slowly. Now this signal generator will go up to uh, 80 megahertz and uh, I've done a review on it I'll put a link up top to that so if you want to look at it you can but one of the things I pretty much never look at is um, how low it'll go and it will go very low now currently I've got it set to 10 hertz producing a sine wave but if I select frequency um, I can go down there to 1 hertz and then if I choose to move the cursor across onto the first uh, digit after the decimal point I can go down to 0.5 Hertz and if you like um, uh, one cycle every every two seconds so you might be thinking well what use is this and the answer is well that depends what you're trying to do but let's just um, proceed with this for a minute so let's go even lower and let's go down right down to 0.05 Hertz yeah and that's a bit of an interesting um, speed for a wave so let's um, let's have a look what uh, what that looks like on the oscilloscope okay here's the display um, showing us um, that uh, 0.05 Hertz and I've set the scope uh, in roll mode so that it, so you don't have to wait for it to um, uh, acquire a sample before it uh, shows you the display it's just continuously on the right hand side there displaying uh, the voltage that, that's coming in so that's 0.05 Hertz and if I went up to 0.1 Hertz you can hopefully see the change there in the frequency um, but it's very slow indeed um, and we can go even slower let's go to point oh oh five hertz or if you like five millihertz and the scope is now um, well it will show you that but um, it's very very slow indeed um, so let's see if we can if we can represent that um, it, it is changing but it's probably quite hard to see but it's changing very very slowly indeed so let's um, pick a more uh, sensible um, frequency I'm going to go back to that um, 50 uh, 50 millihertz so 0 0.05 Hertz and uh, I'm going to you can see now it is displaying um, a sine wave now incidentally um, if you want to work out what um, 0.05 Hertz is um, here's the formula for um, frequency so frequency is equal to uh, 1 over the period so if we divide um, uh, 1 by 0.05 in other words take the reciprocal the answer we get uh, is the period in this case it's 20 um, and that means the uh, time that a whole wave will take to pass is, is 20 seconds so just let's have a look at uh, another way that we might represent that that information okay i've got a fairly simple circuit here so across the output of the signal gen i've got a current limiting resistor and i've got two yellow leds um, uh, and they're oriented uh, anode cathode and cathode anode so depending on um, where we are in the waveform uh, the corresponding led uh, will light so we're at the positive going um, stroke now and that LED was a light momentarily it's dropping back down and in any moment now we should see that other one light up hopefully uh, I've reduced the brightness on the camera so you're hopefully seeing that okay and there's a couple of things going on here they're off for quite a long time because obviously it reaches a point in the wave where we're below the um, uh, required forward forward bias voltage for the LED to actually light 
So if I just speed that up to 0.1 hertz, hopefully at, at 100 millihertz you can see it a little bit quicker. Let's go up to um, 0.5 hertz. Yeah, there you go. You can now see each um, LED flashing alternately. Now, if I were to pick a square wave, what we should now get, there we go, is a, a much more instantaneous swap over because no longer have we got uh, the sine wave and varying up and down gently we've now got either a, um, a positive or a negative going uh, wave so if we drop back down to that's 100 millihertz and if I go back down to that 50 millihertz there um, we're going to see that's going to be on for 10 seconds and then it's going to flick back over and the other LED will be on for 10 seconds which gives us um, the uh, 1 divided by 0 0.05 which is the um, uh, period of, of 20 seconds so that's some um, swapping over there if you want to sit with a stopwatch and work that out you can um, I'm not going to bother um, so question is what on earth is the use of that well I think I've probably demonstrated it there because another option would be to, to pick a waveform, in this case a pulse, uh, like so, and we could then uh, arrange the duty cycle on the pulse um, to be, shall we say, 10%. So I'm just going to try and set that up for you now. There we go. So that's a 10% duty cycle. And I'm, what I'm going to do, so that we don't die of boredom, uh, but you're hopefully going to see there's a... Um, a pulse there which is going to occur every 20 seconds now at the moment it happens to be it's a positive going pulse because that that LED lights up on the positive side and that lights up on the, the negative side because of the way I've arranged them on the breadboard but that pulse there which lasts um, actually lasts just over a second um, will occur every 20 seconds so if you want in uh, a time pulse for something that you're working on and you don't want to build yourself a 555 timer circuit or something like that just just so you can try something out straight away you've got um, actually quite a, a potentially sensible use for this low frequency application of a signal generator and not all signal generators do it uh, quite the same way so this is my signaling generator and this has a, a numeric keypad so I can still move the cursor across and alter things uh, on the screen as I was doing on the Yunk Tech one but here if I want to I can key a number in so if I enter 5 the display changes along the bottom and I can choose megahertz, kilohertz, hertz, millihertz or microhertz so I could enter 5 millihertz and we get 5 and then the MHZ sim symbol there so there's lots of um, different ways but the two the two might but I can still um, if I want to use the cursor here to change the uh, frequency just using the uh, the main uh, the main dial knob so either way it works um, and although I really like this keypad entry on occasions I have accidentally pressed MHZ there unthinkingly it is a small m and that's a large m so it's milli and mega but I've occasionally pressed that and then wondered why things aren't working and actually that's because I've set an extremely slow waveform so um, I have to bear that in mind now and I'm using the signal generator okay here's another um, potential random use for a signal generator while I've been on the siglant I've left it switched on and I've now got the output attached to um, uh, a multimeter this is the Kiwi it's ST600 uh, which claims to be true RMS now I've had quite a few companies want to send me multimeters for review so I'm usually usually up for that because I think uh, reviews are handy for people to, to have a look at and I try to be as honest as I can uh, so I've got here on the siglant, I've got uh, the outputs disabled at the moment, so ignore those numbers. Uh, I've got 50 hertz, so what I'm first of all going to do is I'm going to drop onto frequency and I'm going to select 55 hertz because that way we'll hopefully keep um, uh, people on both sides of the Atlantic happy. So we're not at 50 hertz, we're not at 60 hertz, we'll go with 55 
and I've got it set up for an output of 10 volts peak to peak and so I would quite often use this to check if the meter really is going to um, show me through RMS. So I've got the meter set up for AC and I would expect it to be about um, 0.7 something if it was uh, the RMS value of 10 volts peak to peak. So let's enable the output. See what the meter makes of it. There you go, um, 7.09 volts. So yes, um, it is reading um, something akin to uh, RMS. And if we now um, select uh, 1 volt peak to peak, we should hopefully get point, yeah, there we go, we're getting point 0.7. So it's agreeing at uh, one tenth of the voltage as well. Uh, so that's uh, yet another use for the um, output of a signal generator. Okay, one of the beauties of a, an oscilloscope, of course, is that it's able to produce a, a visual um, interpretation of what's going on inside the circuit. And that's, uh, I think, for the human brain, very um, useful in terms of, of understanding something in electronics, which is highly conceptual. So I've got the signalant uh, generator again, um, at still at 55 hertz, uh, producing um, a 10 volt peak to peak um, sine wave as you can see there and I've got a couple of diodes here um, so we could uh, hopefully now visualize a, a very common uh, use for a diode which is rectification so if we go to the um, opposite end of this diode as you can see we're getting halfway rectification there with the um, bottom half of the wave being chopped off by the diode and if we were to reverse the diode I've got two diodes here so you can uh, uh, see it. So this diode is reversed. If we go to the end of that one, uh, we're getting the negative half of the um, wave is being retained and the positive half is being prevented from, from flowing through the diode. So we've got there nice visualization of turning an AC waveform into a halfway rectified DC waveform in that case, or the, neg the negative going one there. and. Uh, you could obviously uh, do a similar thing with a bridge rectifier should you so wish. Okay, so if you want to develop that a little bit further, what we've now got, we've still got the diode in half wave rectification mode here. So we've got the AC waveform coming in and we should have half wave rectification at the far end of the diode there. I've now got the output of that diode feeding into a, a 5 volt um, regulator here. And so a very simple circuit, the center pin is grounded, uh, input into pin one and the output is pin two. And as you can see, we've got the scope here is set to five volts per division. So we've got um, uh, the best part of uh, 10 volts uh, peak in there. So let's look what we've got on the far side of the regulator. I'll try and do that so you can actually see the screen at the same time. There we go. Now that might look a bit strange because you're thinking perhaps the regulator isn't doing the job right. Actually it is. That uh, top of that flat there is indeed 5 volts. Um, and obviously when the input drops below the threshold for the 7805 regulator, uh, it, it effectively switches off and produces nothing. Um, and obviously what we've got here is we've got uh, no um, smoothing of any kind after the halfway rectification as you can see there got nothing at all um, and so beyond it the 7805 is doing its absolute best but what it's actually producing are, are pulses of DC there so we can easily sort that um, with a capacitor so I've got a 470 microfarad electrolytic here uh, well, it's a 25 volt one so there's no problem with the 10 volts peak to peak so if we now connect that um, between ground being careful to observe polarity between ground and the output of the diode let's now probe the end of the diode that was that half wave and now you're seeing actually something which is already much much better that capacitor is more than keeping up with um, the fluctuation so let's see what's happening on the far side of the reg and we have indeed got uh, and nice and steady um, 5 volt output. So we've been able to demonstrate there fairly simply on the breadboard the operation of a halfway rectification, the um, way a smoothing capacitor will help to uh, the output of the 5 volt regulator and we've effectively um, uh, constructed a simple power supply. Now the output, the AC waveform we've used is coming off the signal generator so it's not 
capable of um, producing uh, lots of current but what it is capable of doing here on the bench in the lab is uh, showing us visually what happens in a circuit with um, uh, different size capacitors so if for instance I just apologies for the creaking chair um, if we take uh, something that's uh, a bit of a, a different size if I've got uh, something handy yes I have so I've got um, a one microfarad capacitor here also uh, radial electrolytic which is what I needed so I could do it so I'm now going to just swap that out I'm going to put the one microfarad in like so and so let's now probe the output again and as you can see it's not topping up those peaks anything like the 470 was and if we check the output we have got a slight change in the shape there if I if you watch that little knee if I pull that out you'll see it does have some effect so one microfarad isn't enough 470 is clearly plenty um, now if you started putting uh, lots of load on the output of that uh, you would clearly eventually reach the point where the 470 microfarad capacitor couldn't keep up I either and so to continue the experiment further you might produce a bridge rectifier here which actually fills in the um, the half wave gaps there with a pulse put there as well and that means you can then um, have the benefit of, of both sides of the rectified waveform uh, that's for another video um, and there you go that's yet another use of a, a signal generator which is providing the AC supply for this experiment okay well that's a look at a few more uses for a signal generator and hopefully it's inspired you to perhaps um, think about the kind of things that you could put the signal generator to some some good use so i uh, hope that's been helpful um thanks very much for watching uh, and look forward to seeing you on the next video